Well, happy birthday, Boogie. The big 5 0. Ooh, the big 5 0. You've made it a long time, especially with that gruesome, that gruesome bit of cancer you've got. Oh, must have been an arduous journey to the uh, the 50 year mark. Chad, are you ready to celebrate Boogie's big birthday bash with me? Oh, we've got such a celebration planned as we go over the final Boogie stream. Yesterday was a bit of a, a blowout. But first, let me get so let me let me get to uh, how do I put this? Let me get to some other official business first. Let's get that intro song out of the way. There we go. You may have noticed they've mistakenly remonetized me for a minute. I doubt that's going to last very long, but I put little puddings and little itty bitty hamsters in for the memberships. Tiny itty bitty little hamsters and puddings. I've heard some people saying, speculating, Keemstar pulled a few strings, got me my channel back. We all know YouTube is really big on the idea of mocking people who've gone through sexual abuse. <laughs> that was the decision. That was the decision at YouTube headquarters. They said, hey, Keem, we need you to get Jim to make fun of Boogie <laughs> about a traumatic childhood uh, uh, situation that he went through, and then we're going to remonetize him. We're going to let him get all the fucking dollary dues. But he's got to make that fat motherfucker cry. It's the first thing you got to do. So Kim was like, Eagle has landed. Let's send the message. Signal flares up in the air. Let's do this. Jim, <laughs> Jim, you've got to dunk on him. You've got to come dunk on this fat titted man and make him cry about this terrible tipple abuse. I was a man for the job. I was hired to come in and do it. Let's make it awkward and uncomfortable. That's what Jim's for. Then I got that email. Mission accomplished. We'll call you when we need you. We'll call you when we need you to go after more sex abuse victims. Jim. Checks in the mail. Check is in the mail. That's how corporate America works. That's how YouTube. We all know YouTube is just exactly like that. That's how it's set up. <laughs> That's how it works. They love edgy shit. They love it. They're so down for it. It's the greatest way to get re-monetized. Actually, it's my Tekken video. A shit post video I put up. Got enough watch hours. Go figure. But they they greenlit the channel again. That was a mistake. So please remember, there's Ko-Fi and Cash App. And of course, hats for your hats for more hats. I think my wife has drawn more art and put it up on the store. We're a store-funded economy over here. So be sure to go over there and check that out. <laughs> what a doozy. What a doozy of a couple of weeks. It's been very strange this boogie situation. Now, I'm, I'm vaguely familiar with boogie. I mean, we all are kind of right. We know that he exists as a content creator on the internet and he has for a long time. We saw the uh, spectacle of the cancer debacle unfold in real time. His destiny came in and spanked his ass a little bit. And then we saw that kind of just tailspin over days, uh, over the course of a week, really, as it just kind of built its own momentum. And during that time, all the channels that had been dedicated to calling out Boogie and talking about, you know, all the lies and all the obfusca or obfuscation, I can't say the word. I can't say that word. My tongue's not working. All the shenanigans. Let's go with shenanigans. But all this bullshit. All these channels that really were dedicated to cataloging his bullshit felt vindicated. We had old Jackson Clark vindicated. All the A-logs vindicated. Because they said, you know, I don't really trust what's going on. I don't, I don't find it to be honest. And then finally he gets called out on it. And first he denies it after Destiny comes after him. Then the next stream comes. More evidence is presented. And the next stream comes. And finally he breaks. He cracks. He can't take it anymore. He finally admits that it's all bullshit. When he's waving his, his little uh, phone in the air and saying that that was his portal and he had the information on that and his uh, roommate and everybody else could see it and it was all true but he wouldn't send it to anybody. All bullshit. And I think most people picked up on that because who's going to refuse $80,000 to send a single screenshot? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't feasibly make any sense, especially at the tail end of a crypto scam. So it was a, it was a rough fucking patch of uh, uh, days there for the, boog <laughs> for the boogeyman. <laughs> crypto scam, get embarrassed by that, fake cancer, get nailed on that. How do we top that? Where does it go from there? Well, I've got a dark, dark stream for you today. 
to celebrate this 50th birthday of Boogie's, which is actually his birthday today. He mentioned this like yesterday or the day before. <laughs> We're going to go after one of his other larger claims and just see what we think about it. Because this is something else that apparently is, is a point of contention. And can you really blame people? Boogie's become the, the man that cried wolf. And now everything and anything that he's ever said or done is a suspect. After the crypto scam, after the cancer bullshit, can you really take his word at anything? And so this week has been weird. You have this all kind of playing out, and then people are hesitant. They don't really know when they're watching this, is this real? Is this just like a, a scripted kind of kayfabe thing? I, I couldn't tell you. Maybe, maybe Keemstar and the boys are cooking this back in the lab. I don't know. But the amount of reputational damage that Boogie has taken seems to be fucking extraordinary. Seems to me it'd be a little difficult to kind of pass that off as just a, a giggle for the boys. And so we come to <laughs> we come to the most uncomfortable subject matter of all. But first, let's kind of ease into it. So what happened when last we left off on Dragon Ball Z? Well, Boogie got busted for the crypto scam. Boogie got busted for the cancer scam. And it wasn't looking good. Keemstar threw him off the show. You know, said, I'm not going to work with you anymore. Allegedly bought him out of his 25% ownership. I guess he had 25% ownership of Local Live Podcast. And then demanded his play button, which he actually got. <laughs> he sent it to him. He got his fucking play button. So it was kind of down in the dirt. So, I mean, how do you top that? Where do you go from there? Well, how about... Freaking the fuck out. So Keemstar, who for some reason pities Boogie more than I think any other person on the internet. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. It's just like he's this little retarded goof of, you know, goof of a sidekick, maybe. It's just he just has like in his heart, he's got empathy for him. So he's trying to find some way to redeem this guy. And he's going to have him come on the show and talk about other stuff. But Boogie didn't take that so well. Had a little bit of a spaz out. A little bit of a, a tipple twisting, if you will. A bad incident took place. Boogie will probably not be on the show tomorrow. Oh, oh, what happened to our Boogie Man? What happened? Well, let's find out. Let's find out. A bad incident. I don't know what that could be. That could be anything. Last night I was forced to call the police on Boogie 2988. I'll explain everything tonight. Uh-oh call the police on Boogie. He's such a rational, insane person who never spurgs out. Why would you need to call the police on Boogie? What could possibly be going on? Well, let's see what the show topic was. Oh, God. <laughs> Buckle up, audience. We're going fucking dark today. Let's take a look. Has been saying throughout the years that different stories about his abuse, and they do not match up. Now, this is a known liar, a known manipulator, right? And here mm -hmm. people have gone throughout the years and they got statements. In 2012, he said this. In 2016, he said this. And they don't match. They don't link up. So all this was put together on a screenshot. And I'll show you the screenshot in a minute. But I don't want to derail the show for by looking for it. Um, Uh-oh. Are we going to be talking about childhood abuse? That's a dangerous subject. Chat, can we, can we, get a, what, what would we call it? See, I forgot, like, we're on YouTube now, right? And motherfuckers are scared to make videos where they even say anything like, uh, you can't say the word kill or abuse or gun. Suicide's a no-no. Can't say blood or gore. You never notice how they all fucking said to themselves now? And they put the little, like, um, little asterisks in the word. You ever read a title? It's annoying as fuck. Try to go watch a true crime thing now where they talk about murder and suicide. Words can't be said. But we're going to be talking about childhood abuse, which is like the big boy subject to be talking about. Nice and dark. Really monetizable, isn't it? So can we get a, can we get a CA in chat for childhood abuse? <laughs> can we spam that to thank YouTube for the remonetization? Oh, Jim's been remonetized. Wonder what he's going to talk about. Dark fucking childhood abuse. Let's go! Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Susan. Oh, no, Susan doesn't work here anymore, does she? Oh, that's right. Yes, chat. You have to say, you have to say unalive. Can't say suicide. No. Unalive is the word. Can, uh, you, there are a lot of words we can't say anymore. Lots of CAs in the chat. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> Thank you for the dollar he dues. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. I'm gonna be getting a little mad at me. <laughs> Tiny bit upset at me. Okay. So we're headed into dark territory, aren't we? Well, let's see where this goes. Cause this was this was Keem's idea. Uh, you know, let's take it from the perspective that Keem is on the level. I know some people are like, oh, this is kayfabe, but let's let's say it's on the level. <laughs> He's really doing like a PT Barnum thing with this motherfucker. He's like, hey, Boogie, I want you to come on the show and let's talk about what a fuck up you are with that crypto scam. And then after he gets trounced on that, he's like, hey, Boogie, this guy that hates you and who you hate, Destiny, he's going to come on here and he's going to shit right in your mouth about the faking cancer. And then after that, he's like, hey, hey Boogie, we're going to bring you on because people think you made up the whole I've been abused thing. And we're going to make a whole show out of it. And Boogie's just like a whipped puppy dog at this point. <laughs> keeps just counting those coins oh well, let's see where it goes this is just a setup why would you have to call the police well we're gonna find out and so well, I you could look for it i want to make a comment if you want to look for it okay go um, ahead I, I i question boogie on this this particular point myself because i never knew he was like in the situation where like he was lying about being you know abused as a child i figured he got hit by his mother but like i heard that he like had to give his like father a blow job and jerk him off and all this other shit Oh, family-friendly content. Hey, everybody, grab your kids. Set them around the computer. We're watching the local live. Let's have Wings run that one back. <laughs> it's exploitable clips. As a child, I figured he got hit by his mother. But, like, I heard that he, like, had to give his, like, father a blowjob and jerk him off and all this other shit. And then we had his... Now, come on. What Thanksgiving does that not happen at? I don't know where you prudes grew up, but that was common occurrence in the old Augustine home. Hey, Jimmy boy, come on over. Daddy's got a turkey leg for you. Dad, that's not a turkey leg. Keep your mouth shut and sell those fucking hats. His brother on the podcast variation of the show, and his brother stated that his father would come on work late. He mainly drunk. He was never mean to Boogie. And I'm like, this is the same guy that said he made Boogie give him a blowjob? Like, it didn't add up in that situation. I called Boogie on it on a show probably about three or four episodes ago, and he kind of like swiped it under the rug yeah yeah now uh this is actually an important thing because we're, we're gonna i, I want to show one of the manipulation tactics of boogie i mean this is a dark conversation don't get me wrong we'll, we'll touch on that but i've set this up and we're going to jump around time wise rather than going chronologically because i want you to be amazed at the manipulation tactic you're going to see and it starts right here what is wings telling you wings is telling basically everybody and this is true that uh, Boogie has gone on and he's talked about this on other shows. He's familiar with this, or at least kind of has a base knowledge of it. Um, you know, Boogie has gone on other podcasts. He's talked about it on streams. He's talked about it in tweets and on blog posts. This is not something that he's kept uh, confidential, okay? Um, he has discussed it. And Wings is bringing up that, well, you know, I heard this and I heard this. Uh, that'll be important for later, but just just remember that bit. Yeah, um... These stories just are not linking up. They're not, people. And so I, I do have the graphic now. I'm going to throw it up on screen. And then I'll be able to tell you how everything got fucking absolutely insane after this. All right, bear with me. Here it is. I'm bringing it over. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Okay. How fantastic is it? That he has a <laughs> look at Boogie's. I don't, I don't know who made this infographic, but they got him smiling. Look at the smiles on his face and big fucking font at the top. Boogie lied about being raped. And it's nothing but quotes. Tons of fucking quotes related to all sorts of shit he said over the years. This is what, this was the subject Gabe wanted to talk about. Imagine being Boogie. Imagine being Boogie sitting at home like, how much worse can it get? God, they've already found out about the crypto scam. They already know about the cancer shit. And you turn on Lolcow Live and there's your co-host with his fucking infographic that said you lied about being raped. And there's your big smiling fucking face. And they even made it with his fake teeth one where they, they, they did the skin in purple. So like, it makes his chompers stick out even more oh that is brutal shit uh because it is kind of small text but this is just a graphic that's going around that has all these different statements of boogie being abused and 
Buggy's uh, R-word allegations. And if you read through this and take the time, they don't link up. And on this graphic, in the bright red, he talks about his mother's abuse. In the blue, his father. And in the pink, his sister. And they these things don't link up. They just don't. So there's a lie somewhere, okay? There is a lie somewhere. Okay. So that's the show opener. That's how it starts. Why did Boogie need the police called on him? Well, Keem's explaining, I'm going to do a show talking about the abuse allegations. Now, the two important things to note as we go forward with this, and it's, it is going to be important to kind of show the manipulation. Boogie, or um, Wings is already familiar, right? He's like, oh, yeah, I've heard this stuff. And then you hear what Keem said. Well, these are quotes from this family member and this family member and this family member, or I'm sorry, about them, right? You know, um, that he said publicly on different forums or in, you know, different uh, entertainment avenues, podcasts, blogs, whatever it may be. You'll see why that's important later on. But let's let's jump into an interesting piece to kind of follow this up. Boogie says, I will not talk about my abuse on the show. It's it's too hard for me. Left it at that. Bull, bull fucking shit. Like, he, he talks about it all the fucking time. I, before I even met Boogie, I knew about his abuse. And I, I, I try to keep things privately, especially if you do them in private with me. I love the idea of that. I, mean, I know this is dark, okay? I understand that what we're talking about is very dark. But the humorous side of it is what Wings is saying, based on his previous statement, is before he ever met, the first day he met Boogie, in Wings' head was the thought, this dude, this dude sucked his dad's dick. It's basically what he said. I've heard about it everywhere. It's what Wings is saying. Like the first thought that popped into his head is, oh yeah, you're the guy that sucked your father's cock. Nice to meet you. I do YouTube videos, by the way. But like we were driving over to your house the first day we went up to Buffalo. The very first day when you wanted to come, we had like pizza and wings. We had to go pick the food up, right? And Boogie's on the phone in the backseat of the truck with his sister. And his sister is like chewing him out because... She's calling him a liar and think this never happened to me and this kind of stuff. But I only had half the conversation because all because here is on the stuff. What Wings just said is very, very interesting. Uh, it's even more interesting and important than I think Keem even realized because it plays in again to this, this manipulation tactic that Boogie will use and the lies that he will facilitate. Like uh, Wings is saying in two things, right? Now we've got two things. Uh, one, he's familiar with these stories because they were out there. Keem said he saw them in the infographic. And then Wings is following that up by basically saying, hey, I was in the car ride coming up. This was, I think, like some party they had over at Keem's house. Uh, when we're in the, the truck, the car, whatever the fuck it is, um, he's having this conversation with a family member talking about, uh, you know, uh, this stuff. And they're upset saying it's not true. It's bullshit. Uh, don't bring it up. Don't bring this subject up. Understandable. Um and, you know, and then Boogie follows that up by saying, this is why they don't want me to talk about it online. Again, understandable. Now, just keep those little nuggets in your head, because prepare to be amazed. <laughs> prepare to be amazed. Oh, and I should say to set this, let me, let me back this up for one second. To set this up, this is later on in the stream. All right. What you saw was at the very beginning of the stream. This is later on. This is about two or three hours into it. And Mood is going to bring up, Basically, what Wings brought up just a second ago, the, the, what you had just seen, what Wings had said, I heard a half a conversation. He was having a conversation with a family member. Okay? Now, Muda's going to bring this back up because when we went into this subject, right, Boogie had said, there are certain things I don't want to talk about. Okay? We get it. That's fine. Uh, there are certain people I want to keep vague or third parties I don't want to bring into it. Okay? That's fine, too. But... Yeah. What Wings has said and what that infographic shows is Boogie talks about this all the time. And even more importantly, he talked about it like three days ago in front of Wings. So now Muda is going to ask him, well, wait a minute.
So here we go. Am I muted? I don't know. Is my did my mic die on me here? Hold on one second here. Hold on one second here, chat. Might have an issue. It's showing me good to go. It's showing me the audio is working. Here we go. Am I muted? I don't know. Okay, no, I'm listening to the stream. You're all fucking with me. Maybe I was muted before. Maybe I have to redo that. Do I have to redo that segment? Is Boomer Jim fucking it up again? Ah, oh, god damn it, Boomer Jim. Boomer Jim, what are you doing? Grabbing the moonshine, getting drunk, selling hats, Boomer Jim, having flashbacks to the turkey legs your daddy made you suck at Thanksgiving, Boomer Jim? What the fuck? Boomer Jim. All right. <laughs> I can reset that bit up. We can do it again. That's fine. That's fine. I don't care. Let me, you know, I'm going to pull a Ralph mail. I'll pull a Ralph, let me pull up a Ralph mail clip. Boomer Jim's going to get all fucked up on the zanies like Ralph mail would. Yeah. 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 We need more. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. We need more. Yes, yes, yes. This is bullfuck shit. This is <laughs> oh you know i'm not i really don't have any we're not going to really cover ralph that, that the casino's got him covered i think but just a few clips here and there in case i ever boomer it up i've got something to go to <laughs> to show you what the alternative yes yes bring me more oh bring me more with the nice music in the background it's very nice works out very well all right, but back to where we were. Got to just fucking it all up. Okay, let's see. In a graphic, that's his sister playing Twister with his sister. His poor little tipples. All right. So maybe I was muted. I don't know how much you heard of that. But we're going into it. Wing says he's familiar with it. Boogie's introduced it to him. He's heard it everywhere. Keem's familiar with it. He even brought it up. There was a conversation at the very beginning of the stream about it. Now later on, two hours in, Mood is going to jump in and say, mm, you know, that's weird. What about this? Uh, before I before I jump in past me, before past Jim has something to say, you see where we're like, uh, this is very strange. What you're going to watch kind of play out here as we jump around the timeline of this stream is is Boogie basically trying to pull one over and make it seem like Wings is crazy. He's gaslighting him. What clip are we talking about? The clip itself is muted? I'm being told the clip is muted. Is that what the problem was? Let me go here and check. How could the clip be muted? Oh, my God, it is muted. <laughs> is that what they meant? Oh, my God, I'm fucking retarded. Okay. Okay. All right, I see. I misunderstood. My wife had to come down and slap me on the head. And it's like, how fucking retarded are you, bro? What are you doing? The clip is muted. It's playing fine for me, but I had the uh, wrong audio properties. <laughs> I had the wrong audio properties set up, and it wasn't playing properly. Oh, my God, that's embarrassing. Horribly embarrassing. Okay. You know, 14th time's the fucking charm, really. 14th time is the goddamn charm. I hope... <laughs> oh, I thought they, I thought you guys were talking about, like, my mic is fucked up. And I'm like, I've got green on my mic. Why would that be screwed up? 
playing the clip repeatedly. A fucking confused old man. Doesn't know what he's doing. Boy, I bet you're really happy that you paid for those memberships now, aren't you, kids? By the way, don't forget to hit those memberships and Super Chats and Ko-Fi and Cash App and buy a hat while you're at it. All right, let's fucking, one more time, let's start at her up again. At the very beginning, before you... Nope, you be quiet, Buddha. I need to make sure that this clip actually works. Holy shit. Okay, it should work now. We should be good. Okay, old man, here we go. At the very beginning, before you joined the stream, Wings, you were talking about, like, apparently you guys were, like, earlier in the, like, in a vehicle, and, like, Boogie was on the phone with the sister, and she was, like, mad because she was yes. lying about stuff. Yes. Because when when, was when were you on the phone with my sister? No, I wasn't. You were on the phone in the back of the of the truck. Oh shit! You, you were and you were talking to your sister, and she was no, like, I wasn't at you. Yes. No, you I wasn't. I didn't call my sister. What are you talking about? Your sister called you. I no, mean, she I didn't. Know. Okay. During this during this trip to New York, that's yeah, a How are you going to sit there and tell me this guy doesn't lie when you're recalling did, something and I he's telling not. you you're he's a fucking, fucking liar to your lying. face, Wings? He's fucking lying. No, he's I calling did not you talk a to fucking liar, sister. Wings. I don't talk Why to my call sister. My wife in here. She was in the truck. Okay, so here we go. They're getting into their argument. Who's getting gaslit? What did this conversation take place? But what does Boogie say? I don't talk to my sister. He even goes on further to say later on, I've never talked to her. I don't talk to her. I haven't talked to her in a year. What are you talking about? You're crazy. And Wings is like, what the fuck are you talking about? And this is this is one of the things I try to bring up with these guys, is he does this to them point blank without any hesitation. When Muda offered to do like 50 grand for this um, med medical documentation showing he had cancer, Boogie said, no, I don't trust Muda. He's a liar. He wouldn't actually pay me. When Wings recounts the story, no, Wings is a liar. That never happened. When Boogie spazzes out on stream, he says, oh, it's Keem's fault. He he uh, forced me to do it. He forced me at gunpoint. First off, you got like 800 pounds on Keem. Secondly, the dude's like five foot tall, Boogie. All right, what, is he going to bite your ankles? What do you mean you were forced to do this? <laughs> it blames Keem. Oh, it's all Keem's fault. Boot is a liar. Wings is full of shit. All projection. Pure fucking projection. But now here we are. Muda brings it up. What about this conversation? Because, you know, Boogie, I don't want to talk about these people. And he's like, well, wait a minute. I mean, you're, you're talking about it in this truck ride. <laughs> he's trying to make Wings look crazy. Wings will bring his wife in to verify that he is not insane. Go right Ooh. ahead. You're mistaken. Wings, Whoa. you're defending a guy that's painting oh. you as Why would asshole. I lie about this? Why would I lie about this? You are mistaken. I was uh, not on the phone with my sister. Don't your voice, Wings. Your wife knows. Can she be an eyewitness to this? Oh, yeah. Bring her yeah. in. Uh, Boogie, Boogie, I oh, think oh. you need to really refresh your memory. Why would Wings lie hey, about that? Hey, Desi, come here. Why would Wings lie? Wings ain't Desi. lying about that. Come on. Desi, come I on. don't see any reason Wings would benefit from lying about I'm gonna that. I'm going to bring my Wings lie about that shit. Hold All on. right, ladies and gentlemen, we got Wings versus Boogie. Both of their women are coming in to testify. <laughs> Did Boogie, on the way to Keemstar's 4th of July party, talk to his sister about the abuse on the phone and Wings overheard it? Or did Wings make this story up? We got Desi versus Kelly, Boogie versus I Wings, know, and Lies know. versus the hardcore truth. Here we go. So here we go. What do you think's gonna happen? What do you think? What do you think Wings' wife is gonna say? Because this, this apparently they were the four people in the vehicle. Is what I'm assuming. It was Wings and his wife, and then I'm guessing Boogie and his girlfriend. So you know, Boogie's out there saying this never happened. No conversation. I don't talk to my sister. I haven't talked to her in a year. No contact in a year. Let's go. Wings for Keemstar. Yes. And we had Desi and Boogie in the back seat of the car. Okay. Yes. Hold on. Bo was Boogie on the phone? Yes. Was Boogie on the phone with his sister? Yes. <laughs> oh, boom. So now you're going to have to try to convince me, right? You're going to have to try and convince me that not only is Wings, for no reason whatsoever, making this up, pulled it out of his ass for the fun of it, but his wife decided to, too. His wife likes to fuck with him and troll him on occasion, just decides, oh, you know what, instead of taking that opportunity to just cause him a little mischief, no, I'm just going to agree with him. So these two people corroborate what they're, what's being said. Yeah, there, there was a conversation. He was on the phone with his sister. Now, Boogie, on the other hand, has turned his camera to point at the table. And the minute he does, his dogs start going ballistic. And listen to his girlfriend in the back. It's like a hostage. It's like an ISIS video. 
<laughs> okay. Boom. All right. So here's the question. Even Desi. the dog fucking Desi, back hold up. <laughs> Desi, when when we were on the way to the fourth, when we were on the way to the fourth of July party. Yeah. Okay. Did I talk to anybody on the phone? No. Did I get a text from my sister? I don't, I don't remember you getting a text from your sister. I mean, I honestly don't. I mean, if she did. But I, I did I her. talk to my sister on the no. phone while we were in the back of the truck? No. God. Of course not. No, you didn't. Ooh, this is getting good. Now, the reality of it is I did get a text from her, but I didn't call her. Oh, oh the reality of it. Because just a moment ago, we heard that you haven't talked to her in a year. But now you're getting it. Now maybe, maybe it's a text. I wasn't on the phone with my sister at all. Now I walks it back. Maybe it was a text. Maybe maybe I was on the phone with her. But you're totally wrong. You saw me having a phone conversation. That doesn't exist. It's in your head. It's fictitious. Wings, you're imagining things. Mr. Wings. I don't have any calls to my sister. I haven't talked to my sister on the phone in over a year. I haven't talked to her in over a year. We're going to find out that's a big old fucking lie. Oh, it's a big old lie. I did talk to you about my sister. Oh, my God. Did it do it again? Holy shit. All right. Hold on, chat. I need to go through my stupid fucking clips because now they're all doing it. I don't know why it reverted to doing this. Sorry. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> it's, it's killing me. It's killing me. God, Jim, you're killing your own momentum. Old man. How many of these clips is that going to Oh, God, I hope it doesn't do it on all of them. It's got this thing where it'll play through your headphones, but it's supposed to do headphones and speakers. Jim keeps setting the wrong one up. I'm going to blame that on my goofballs. Make sure that this is properly set up. I think we're properly set up. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> Let's back it up a second. We'll continue the momentum. Continue it on. The point is to show you the manipulation tactic in real time, which is what you're witnessing. Wings has a vivid recollection of what happened in that fucking truck. His wife backs him up completely on it. Boogie says there was no conversation whatsoever that happened, hasn't talked to his sister in a year, but maybe it was a text message. It's gaslighting the shit out of him, and it just, it continues on. Goes, this is why I can't say anything on the internet about my sister. Yes, because of a text. I did not talk to her on the phone. So you're saying Wings and his wife are liars? No, I just think they're mistaken. No, 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 they're lying. Are no, you sure? Oh, wait, wait, Wings. Are you sure it wasn't a text? Are you sure? Did you hear him talking to his sister directly? This is where it's muddy. I, like, you got me questioning myself. But of course he was I do, on, you're he fucking was, wrong. He was on the phone, and after he got off the phone, he talked about his sister and the internet stuff. I did talk to you about my sister, but it's not because I talked to her because I didn't talk. And he to her. was doing I one of these talked. wings, like phone up to the ear on the phone, well, talking to get, someone. Don't get yeah. confused. You have an eyewitness, Kelly. Ask right. her and just clarify. I got a question. Oh, wait, 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 Boogie. We can yeah, settle ask this Kelly one. if she wait. knew I was specifically on the we phone. We can settle sister. this out right now. Go back to sure. July third on your phone and see if you right. made a call to your sister or she made a call to you. Okay. Scroll back to July third. It would have been July third, right? Yep. So this would have been the date that this party's going on. This is also, I, I, this is, I, I suppose, we're watching two kind of manipulation tactics, but this is, you know, getting lost in the details uh, and the minutia of small things that don't matter, and then arguing a point that's even smaller to kind of try to derail the main thrust of what the conversation is, which we'll get into, because we haven't even got into that yet, right? But this is really to kind of show it, because um, I think what I'm going to set up here is something very interesting, uh, you're going to see play out between the beginning of this call and the end of it. And it has specifically to do with wings. That's why it's kind of, uh, you know, set up like it is specifically because he was in that truck for that conversation. There's another thing that's mentioned earlier on that I think it really ties it all together. So we're just going to watch this play out because now, you know, Boogie who had said, oh, well, you know, I want to keep other family members out of it. Yada, yada, yada. Um, 
decides he's just going to call everybody he knows and brings them on the fucking stream. Because it's, you know, the, the warmest, happiest subject matter to talk about. Uh, yeah, July 3rd. It was, it, was that day, it was the day we brought all that pizza and wings to your house. Yep, July 3rd. No, Ladies sir. And, no, sir. No, sir. I talked to my roommate. I talked to Desi on that date. I talked to Jordy. I I talk... show us, instead of telling us, just show the. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. There's some phone numbers on here that I don't necessarily want to show, but I'll, I'll send it to. Uh, to I don't screenshot want to and send it yeah. to me, right now. Yep. Absolutely. Here's the entire of it, and as you can see, my fingers have not deleted anything. I might have been mistaken on the call, but he was. Oh, because you are. Because he was actually talking to his sister. Uh, to be clear, though, you can delete call history. Yeah, I, I just thought you swipe a finger. So, but even uh, he's walking it back. Even he's walking. Well, I'm walking it back because yeah, I'm not being gaslit right now. There's no. Right, Moot is correct. He is being gaslit right now, because you can see that Boogie already acquiesced to the point that yeah, there was a conversation of some form with his sister, who he said he had no contact with for a year. <laughs> and you'll find out even that's there's the lie upon lies, but they're so scattered out that it's kind of hard. Like until you kind of like sit back and you watch it in retrospect and you really get a good look at it. You don't really start to sync them up. But then when you do, it's kind of like, holy shit. It's like you just lie about anything. Inconsequential shit that shouldn't matter. Small, minute details that just don't fucking matter. It just, he just does. No oh, gaslighting. Desi knows I But do. I do know I have for not fact. talked to my sister any... Hold on a second. Hold on. We're going to call my sister. Fuck it. But I... I've been dancing around third I know. parties. I, I'm entirely certain I didn't talk to her on the third. Hey. hey, when was the last time I talked to you on the phone? Uh, dang, I don't know. I can't remember. Hey, was it July 3rd, just this last July? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, and one one uh, common theme throughout this is uh, Akeem, <laughs> Akeem had problems not laughing about the size. He wanted to treat this with, like, kid gloves and well, maturity, really. It's a very dark subject matter. Uh, and um, <laughs> Boogie started talking about getting his balls whacked, and uh, Keem lost his shit, started laughing, and he's like, that's highly inappropriate. So throughout the majority of the stream, he kept putting a box over his head, and I'm guessing it's uh, maybe the accent of the person speaking is what's making him giggle right now. Uh, and he doesn't want that to be clipped and look like he's uh, just a <laughs> complete asshole. I don't mind, though. I am a complete asshole. Maybe or certain. I need to know for certain. I would have to go through my uh, call log or my text messages. Can you do that for us real quick? I'm on live stream right now, by the way. Oh, hang on. Okay. You want me to do it while I got you on the phone? Yes, please, if you don't mind. Okay, hang on. I'll, I'll say something for I don't know how these god dang fangled things work. They got these uh, digital signals. They're sending them through the teleloops or something. You're on the, you're on the god dang computer. I don't know how, how'd you fit in there, fat boy? This fucking thing's tiny. I don't know, just let me figure this out now. If I hit the, uh, I hit one of these keys here or something happened. Oh, goddamn, the garage door opened. I don't think this is a fucking phone at all. I think I've been tricked by communists. Certain Boogie sister sounds like she can cook some good fried chicken. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Is that racist, by the way? Do you mean that racist? How is that racist? Hey, you brought up curry well, with Muda. Right. You brought up curry kid, with Muda. Because my nephews and nieces are black? Uh, what? <laughs> Your sister ain't black. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? How the fuck are we going to know that? The night Uh Now, did you catch that? Let's back that up. Listen to what she says. Here we go. Sister ain't black. What does that even mean? What? Oh, it's coming up. But it's not even How the <laughs> fuck are we going to know that? Uh, the 19th. On the 19th. Remember, you know, they're looking for the date of the 2nd or the 3rd. Uh, but Boogie here has been saying, I haven't talked to my sister in a year. In a year. Oh, on the 19th. Not the 2nd or the 3rd. On the 19th, I talked to you. But you just said you never talked to her for a fucking year. Just the only date that matters is the third. Can you confirm I didn't call you or you didn't or the call second. me on the third? Well, no, he's saying it took place on the third. 
I mean, what exactly are you asking me? Whether or not you and I talked on the phone on July 3rd. Listen here, computer voice. I don't fucking know what you want. Are you calling me up, asking me to open garage doors? I'm fucking confused over here. Tell me you fit inside a computer. You're too goddamn big to fit in a computer. Honey, I, I never erase anything, so it would take me about five minutes. Okay. Well, do you have a remembrance of us talking on the third? What did we talk about? I don't think. I didn't call you. I don't think I called you on the third. Do you remember me calling you on the third? Say, I, talk about the abuse. Say that. Say that. Well, no, I mean, every time we talk, there's a topic. Every time we talk, there's a topic. But wait a minute. You didn't talk to her. See what I mean? Do you see? Uh, the, we've already got, th like, three lies piled up on top of each other. What do we have so far? One, he's trying to gaslight fucking <laughs> wings into thinking no phone conversation ever took place. That he had no conversation at all in any form. But then he acquiesces and says, okay, I texted. But I've never talked to her, not in a year. Then it's, oh, July the 19th we talked. And then every time we talk. But you don't talk to her at all. So I, it's just, it, it's kind of baffling. Why lie about shit? Like, what what would the point of that be? Birthday or yeah. something with the kids. Oh, was it when Miguel graduated? Yeah, I think we texted about that that day, actually. Hold on, let me check. We did. Yeah, we did not. There was no phone call, though, correct? Uh, I don't think so, because you told me to tell her congratulations All and right. blah. Thank you. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Why? What's the point? I don't know. They're just being fucking... Ludicrous. Ladies and gentlemen, we have 20,000 live concurrent viewers trying to find out if Boogie spoke to his sister on <laughs> July 3rd. This is the most exciting content in the fucking world. Hey, here's, here's the other thing. I don't think I texted her on that day either. Okay. <laughs> no, he's really... He's going for broke. Come on. Bro, come the fuck on. You've just got, you, 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 I haven't talked to her in a year. We find out, yeah, you know, you do, you do talk to her. Why even lie about it? Doesn't make any sense. There's no point in lying about that in particular. And then it's, oh, well, yeah, I did text her. Now it's, no, I didn't text her. It's Buddha's like staring him down. Like, you know, you could be fucking with your phone. Because remember, during the cancer thing, he waved his phone around saying, I've got the evidence here. I've got the evidence here. A lot of people were speculating, oh, he just needs a day or two to doctor up some fucking shit. <laughs> to inspect element and send off some bullshit screen caps. You just said you did. I know. I'm, yeah, I what? think I might have, but that's the Dude, only thing. Dude, there's no way made. Wings is making this up on a thin air, and Kelly is backing him up. You no, have. I discussed. I discussed my sister that day. I just didn't call her. That's. I, I'm telling you, I discussed. She never her confirmed her. or denied it, by the way, too. Okay. Well, then you guys are gonna have to. So do Wings, what did he say exactly? I, me... Yeah, by the way, yeah, he's right. Mood is right. There was no confirmation one way or the other. No confirmation one way or the other. But let's, again, back up. And here's where it gets interesting. What started Boogie in his tailspin, right? What made him actually freak out to the point that the police had to be called? Oh, and before we even do it, I'm going to double check the goddamn audio <laughs> to make sure it works. So I'm not sitting here and doing this again. Okay, it should work. I don't know why all my clips have reset themselves. I don't, it's goblins. Little fucking hat goblins have come in and are fucking with my audio. I don't know why it's doing it. Little demons. But they did. But we should be good. But this should be the clip. I think that'll be enlightening. So this piques my interest. I call Boogie. No answer. Whatever. Go on with my day. About 10 minutes later, I get a call from Boogie. And he's huffing and puffing on the fucking phone. Like he's hyperventilating. Mike's on the other line. So it's the three of us, me, kid behind the camera, Mike and Boogie. And Boogie goes, you are not, you are not going to talk about my sexual abuse on the show. And I go, well, I mean, people are canceling you for this. Don't you want to address it? You are not, you are not going to do it. And he's fucking losing his mind, screaming and fucking yelling. Within about like five minutes of this conversation, I tell Boogie, fine, I won't bring it up, but Wings might bring it up. And then he lost it. So what started Boogie on his big freak out that made them want to call the police on him, that made him start suicide baiting like crazy towards this group of people? Here's my hypothesis. 
Wings was privy to a conversation that was embarrassing to Boogie related to this exact subject. Boogie remembered that fucking conversation and remembered that Wings was there. And when Keem says Wings might bring it up, that was the shit that broke the dam. That was when the waters were let loose. You could see he gaslit fucking Wings and his wife the second he could. There was no conversation. There were no text messages. No, nothing ever happened. I don't even talk to that person. I haven't talked to him for a year. And yet, in the span of this entire podcast, he's shown to be lying about um, all of it. But what started it? Wings. Wings heard something Wings shouldn't have heard. And Boogie flipped out. Because he knew Wings would call his ass out on it if he remembered because Wings has been been a lot more vocal lately in saying whatever the fuck Wings wants to say. That is my honest belief. So what did that freak out look <laughs> what did that freak out look like? Oh boy. Oh hold on. Hold on. Again, I've got now I've got to check every fucking clip. Every fucking clip. Okay. Let's get that one ready to go. <laughs> It give you a little taste uh, of what would it be like. Well, you know, when people say Boogie was like spurging out, what was he spur? What was that like? Here's a little taste of what that would be like. Big man on dick, buy a know. hat for your hat. Let him know. Go off, Queen. Go off, oh, Queen. I'm not interested. Just let me get through it, Dan. You got Matt, this. Matt, stop, 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 stop. Let me get through it, motherfucker. I begged you not to make me talk about this on the show. I begged you. You crushed it. I I begged you! I begged you! I begged you, Dan! I begged you! You crushed I it! You! I you did you. very good tonight! You! I fucking begged you! You did. What are you. What's going on over there? <laughs> it's fucking stream died. He's just pounding the table. I begged you, Dan! Yes, that's right. Buy half for your I need to incorporate that into a commercial. I need to make that part of my. <laughs> Part of my commercial. I just want you to have an idea, like in your head, when we move on to the next clip, and we're talking about like, well, you know, what's going on over here? Let me get this next. Uh, let me get this next clip ready. Uh, what you know, what's going on over here? What what uh, what kind of freakout are we talking about? Well, <laughs> I can tell you, <laughs> it's probably that. It's probably him springing out, flailing his arms around. You know, it's screaming about uh, you know, unaliving. Oh, that's right. I've got to use the new uh, kosher terms. Unaliving himself. Unaliving himself. Yeah, now Kim goes into details about this. And he hangs up the phone on me and Mike and starts FaceTiming me, okay? He starts FaceTiming me, and it got so scary that I hit record, and I didn't actually record this part. But what Boogie did on FaceTime to me was so insane. He was screaming and yelling. He's fucking has a bottle of a bottle of pills, and I don't know what kind of pills they are, but he's putting them in his fucking mouth right and he's acting like he's gonna eat him and he's punching himself in the fucking head and then he's grabbing hunks wings hunks of hair and pulling out hunks i'm telling you his you got, hand, you, you, got you, you got that recorded i don't have that part recorded but i have some of the yelling and screaming so there's boogie calling him up after he told him oh maybe wings is gonna bring it up maybe wings is gonna talk about maybe wings will remember that conversation in that truck boogie and bring it up on a, a stream and what's he do? Grabs a pill bottle, starts smacking himself in the face, going full tart rage, ripping his hair out, looking like a complete fucking lunatic. And then he keeps got like some of this recorded, and he looks like an angry dog. <laughs> he looks like a dog that you took a toy away from. On my fucking phone, because the FaceTime was so yeah, insane. Yeah, I've, 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 I've seen him yell and scream before, but like, at what point do you start calling this dude's bluff? Because he does this every fucking time he doesn't get his way. It's like a kid in the in the fucking drugstore and unhappy he didn't get a car you see that see that's been wings for the last week he's been calling him out on his bullshit a lot and i really truly do think when we looked at those earlier clips about the sister shit and the lie and uh him him saying that wings was just off base that um he was worried wings would have a recollection and bring it up because wings has been just firing off shots like this is what it is. I mean, he, could, he could be taking homeopathic pills, as far as you know. That and those are basically nothing. Now this Eating is chalk. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is after the head of hair. Now remember, this is a FaceTime, and I'm recording, screen recording it on my phone, so there's no audio. But can you see that? Look at him. I want to see. <laughs> <It looks> like... <laughs> 
<laughs> he looks like a, a mad dog. Look at this His shit. hair pull. I don't see no big splotches of hair. It didn't happen. Here. I didn't get the hair pull. I didn't get the hair pull in the video. But he's just... He reminds me of my pets. He fucking reminds me of my pets. Like, this is what my dogs look like when I like playing with like a chew toy with them for like doing tug of war. Like, really, look at this. Look at, like, imagine living with this, this level of just, <laughs> those faces, goddamn. I need to make Luma, like, do a, uh, you know, like a refreshed version of this, and, like, really expand it out with some AI. See that? Look at him. Don't, 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 don't you take my chew toy. Oh, 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 oh. It didn't happen. Here. I didn't get the hair pull. I didn't get the hair pull in the video. But he's just fucking, look at that. You know, if you got on the phone with him about an hour a day, he'd be in such good fucking shape. He's just fucking losing it. Like, completely losing it. <laughs> oh, what is this guy, man? This fucking guy. What kind of, what must it be like to be his friend? You're like, oh, God. Who am I going to talk to today? Oh, it's Boogie. I wonder what's a, what, what am I in store for today? Is he going to wow me with a crypto scam? Is it going to be more fake cancer shit? Is he going to bark like a dog on FaceTime and threaten to fucking throw himself off a bridge? What's the boogster going to do today? What's what's going to happen with our boogman? <laughs> Is he going to invite me on down and make me a member of the sub club? Am I going to be a member of the sub club? Oh, boy. One for me and one for my hooker. One for me and one for the hooker. Welcome to the sub club. One for me and one for my hooker. Oh, Welcome yeah. to the sub club. One for the hooker. One for me and one for the hooker. One for me and one for the hooker. <laughs> oh, this guy, man. This fucking... It just doesn't end. I'm a little... Sta like, it's a little staggering, really, when you kind of line up the lies and you see just the bullshit. And so, I mean, that really was the the thrust of what the stream was going to be about. I was going to go over this. And, you know, it is a dark subject. It is a touchy subject. I get it. Uh, people were uncomfortable with it. I get that, too. Um, but it was like he was already... He was already fucking with people about details, small details to try to like just, and the wings thing, it just adds up. And then he's barking like a dog and ripping his hair out and smacking himself in the face. He's just going full time with it. Doesn't care. He's, he's full on. Fuck it. I'm going to do whatever I want. I have to pause all these clips when I, when I start them up to make sure that their audio is playing properly. So give me a second. Uh, but it continues because Gabe gets into the story of having to, I guess, call a welfare check. Not exactly 100% sure how this works. It's not like you're, you know, swatting somebody. It's not um, sending the police there with an armed response. But, you know, uh, this guy's talking like a maniac and uh, eating pills like they're Tic Tacs, I, I suppose, is what's going on. But let's let's hear it. The entire time, I'm going to kill myself. 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 All right. Like, he hit me with the uh, suicide... The I'd hit, I'd hit him with, make sure you do it outside so they don't have to take the wall out of your house so we can sell it for highest value. Oh, no mercy. Page 5 Pimp coming in from the top rope with no fucking mercy. Wings is really, he's really coming out of his shell. He's like, I'm just going to dunk on this motherfucker. <laughs> Keep the spotlight off my ass. Oh, oh, we're going to have to cut a wall in his house. Fat motherfucker. <laughs> you go on. He's like, basically tell him, make sure to upload it to live leaks. It got to the point where I started getting scared. So then I hit up the group chat, right? Let me go back to the fucking group chat with us. What did I even say in there? Oh, this is so fucking stupid. Um, man, we talked about a lot on this. Uh, I, I, I tagged, I tagged you. I said, I may have to call the cops on Boogie. Mm -hmm. He just called me with kid behind the camera. He's pulling out his hair, big hunks of hair. He put a shit ton of pills in his mouth. I'm not sure if he swallowed them or not. He's saying he's a hundred percent going to kill himself. Um, if he has to answer any questions about his abuse and I already told him that he wouldn't and he doesn't believe me. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to say what Muta was saying, but like basically I, I went to the group chat for help. 
I like, I didn't know really what to do. And he kept up with, he's kept texting me fucking suicidal shit. I'm said, that's it. So I fucking called the cops. Do you actually me. believe that though? Do you actually fucking believe that shit? Like, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. You're saying if, if, if he, if I don't believe him, that 10% of him that might happen, what if he does it? I'll have it on my conscience. Right. Yeah. But like he said it so many fucking times, it's gotten to the point that you it, it, it's hindrance to believe him. I mean, he's right. This is something that Boogie has become well known for, is he pulls this out. This is his trump card. Anytime the heat gets a little too hot, anytime things get a little too feisty, anytime it's a little too inconvenient to address or to deal with, he's always ready to jump to the... I'm going to unalive myself. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to go do something terrible to myself. And it's the best deflection he's had. Well, until he was, you know, you know, he got the cancer thing he was at for a little while and uh, the abuse stuff for a little while. But this is like the, this is just the cream of the crop for him. It's the go-to. It's a standard, really. And I think, you know, even Wings has seen through it at this point. And I think if you watch any of Boogie's, like, interactions on social media, uh, you've probably heard stories about this. Where he'd get into fights with some creator, and this is the shit that he'd be, he'd be saying stuff like this in the DMs. Or he gets into an argument on a stream and he'd go right to it. Always the fallback. But of course, it keeps on going. Just like we've been going for an entire hour. Oh, hey, Jim. You know what that means, right? That means it's break time. That also means it's time to sell some hats. Remember... The best quality hats are available at my or medicare.myshopify.com. You can send those super chats to ko-fi.com backslash medicare or cash app tag money Mr. Medicare. I think that's how you say it. I don't fucking know. <laughs> or you can try YouTube before they yoink us off again. Enjoy the little pudding and hamsters while you can. I wouldn't be surprised if it disappears midstream. How can this guy talk about this sort of thing? That's not allowable. Selling. He's selling memberships with hamsters and talking about sexual abuse? We can't have that over here. Well, let's do a quick little break. We'll do a five-minute break. Uh, play a little, a little hat commercial. And then uh, we'll come back and <laughs> watch the insanity unfold. Oh, it's always fun over here. Always the most lighthearted things to be talking about. Hey, what did you watch on Wednesday? Oh, yeah, this thing about this uh, obese man and his sex abuse, traumatic childhood memories. Oh, really? Oh, was it like a, was it like a, you know, a highbrow thing? Like, what do you, what do you mean you watch? No, it was a man making jokes. He made a lot of jokes about jacking off turkey legs at Thanksgiving and uh, doing Southern voices, making fun of family members. A real asshole. Why'd you watch that? Because I love his fucking hats. We all love hats. They're just, they're fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, I should, you know, I, I have a second background. <laughs> oh, because uh, we had done the, um, the animal the animal cancer thing. And so uh, my wife was like, well, we need to do like a dark, a dark souls version of that uh, based on what you had said to him. So let me, let me switch up the backgrounds. <laughs> There's the dark, dark cancer. Let's really, let's go all in on this cancer and sex abuse. Oh yeah. It's a good combination. It really, really makes YouTube super fucking uh, happy. I'm sure they're thrilled about it right now. <laughs> okay. So we're, we're back at the beginning of the stream where Boogie is starting to spaz out because he's worried Wings is going to bring up something that's probably going to embarrass him. And he starts yanking his hair out and downing pills and just going going all Ralph Amali on us. God, do I have another Ralph Amali clip? Maybe. We got the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah clip. Let me try yeah. that song. But let me, let me make sure the audio actually works because <laughs> it never does. Okay, yes, it looks like this should be good. Yeah, Ralph is having a bit of a tough time. He's had like, like 18 pill streams in a row. I don't know what the fuck's going on with the guy. A lot, a lot of shit's going on with the guy. <laughs> but Boogie's basically pulling one of these on game. No, no, that's not no, no, that's no, just, no, 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 That's just too bad no, no, sharing no, no, experience. No. Wow, god damn, you're a fucked up son of a bitch. Like, fuck, holy shit, like, what the fuck? You know, he, he, he likes to throw the bottles around. Throw, throw, the, throw, the, throw the bottles around. Throw, throw the energies around. Yeah, yeah, throw, throw the bottles around. We'll put that energy around. 
I love all the clanking. People thought I was, oh, Jim, when you edited that clip of uh, Ralph, you know, smirking out and being high and drunk off his ass with 8,000 pill bottles and liquor bottles getting uh, jolted around. Now, that's a real deal. That's 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 a genuine pill stream. <laughs> so we just got to pull one of those. Or at least it'd be sounded like that if you downed a whole bottle. I don't know. I wasn't on this wonderful call. Let me see. I want to make sure I didn't. Uh, look, the entire on? time, I'm going to kill myself. Okay, no, we did that one. Now we're going into the second call. So he's got his multiple calls with this crazy fucker that are just nonstop. Just, just nonstop. Can't stop him. Won't stop him. Again, let's check the audio. God, why did it do this? I don't, I've never seen a default like that to doing it on every clip. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, here we go. We're continuing on. And he's just huffing and puffing. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. His girlfriend is in the background, absolutely terrified. His roommate is in the background, absolutely terrified. I go, am I on speaker? And he goes, yeah. And I go, can your girlfriend hear me? And uh, he goes, yeah. I go, do you hear how scared your fucking girlfriend is? He goes, I don't care. She won't have to live with someone who faked cancer. And fucking just, dude. So I go, Boogie, you need to calm down right now. Because. <laughs> you see fucking wings? Oh, just shit on him. Non look at that. Just just shitting on him. <laughs> He's reached his limit. He's had enough of this Boogie guy. No more. So I go, Boogie, you need to calm down right now. Because I had, I told him before the cops came, Wings, I said, Buggy, you need to calm down right now because the cops are on their way to your house. I had to call in a wellness check because of these threats. Calm down for the cop coming, right? He goes, oh, thank God you called the cop. I'm going to have the cop shoot me in the head. I'm going to have the cop shoot me in the head or as soon as that motherfucker walks into my door, I'm going to fucking hit the cop and I'm going to spend three days in county jail. Now, this is Boogie we're talking about. Remember, this is a guy that uploaded a video where he got winded after doing one strip of his lawn. He, he, he pushed a push mower, one strip of his lawn, and then sat down and did a 10-minute video saying that his heart was going to explode. Telling everybody on the phone in his rage while he's barking like a dog and ripping his hair out and downing pills that he's ready to fight the police. He's going to suicide my cop the second they walk in. Old Boogie's going to throw a haymaker at the officer. He's got his pot full of hot water and he's ready to rumble. These are things he actually fucking said to me. These are things that actually were said to me. So I you am know, the freaking out, Wings. Like, I'm not like, this is not content. This is fucking bad. Oh, it's terrible. That's why it's in my domain. <laughs> so what do you think Boogie does? After, like, throwing a massive tantrum, having a welfare check called in on him, having a weeks-long, uh, you know, celebration of getting shit on, where every A-log that's ever existed is high-fiving each other as he implodes. Like, it's just, it's just gone terribly. And he's telling you, yeah, I'm never coming on. This is never going to happen. What do you think he does? Of course he joins. Of course he decides, I'm going to join. So what, is, what does that look like? What does it look like when our sane, rational individual here decides, oh, I'm going to jump on stream with everybody. We're going to have a gay old time. <laughs> We're going to have a great time up on stream here. Let's take a look. Just a little highlight of how Bookster was <laughs> on this fucking stream. It's when you, you know, self-delete yourself and Desi has to witness it or find your exactly. fucking big fat carcass. All these motherfuckers to go back to the we jerk their fucking cocks to it. Yeah, no but you're destroying people's lives no regardless. You're no going to get the thing. Don't no get up that fucking sofa. Boogie, stop. Fucking sofa. Boogie, stop, stop, stop. The screaming and yelling isn't helping you, and it isn't. I'll whisper it. Listen to me. Oh, God. Imagine. Imagine you're his chick, and it's like three in the morning, and that's what you. that's what's whispered in your ear. That's what that sexy time's about to start, and here comes Boogie. And this is what you hear at three in the morning in a dark room with no lights or escape. You and it isn't. I'll whisper it. Listen to me. This is what he does. This is why this was the conversation last night. Go fuck yourself. I will divulge no more medical information to any of you motherfuckers. <laughs> this is, you don't got to tell me what it is. Like, there's a bevy of medicine. Yourself. Go fuck yourself. Situation. And die, I'm so.
happy. I hate this. I hate it. I hate this show. I hate fucking breathing air. I hate being alive. I'm in so much fucking pain. I can't fucking stand it anymore. I can't fucking stand this. I can't fucking stand this. I've ruined my fucking life. I just want to be on. Perfect. <laughs> that's a perfect freeze frame. Holy shit. Oh my god, that's awesome. It's like a hungry, hungry hippo. It's a hungry, hungry hypocrite. Oh, I'm big old boogie, the hungry, hungry hypocrite. I've come to eat your lies. Feed me your little marble lies. Put them in my tummy. Put them in my fat fucking tummy. <laughs> Holy shit, what a great pause. Oh, perfection. Fucking perfection. Look at that. Look at the just psychosis. <laughs> what is the name of the... Oh, my God. What is the name of the clown in um in the Spawn movie? He looks... That looks like the clown from the Spawn movie without the makeup. What is it? Vindicator? What is the name of the fucking clown? Somebody in chat has to know what I'm talking about. He's a dead ringer for it. It's perfection. It's absolute perfection. I want to die. I died. Oh That's my God. what I say oh over and over and over again. I hate being alive. I hate being alive. I hate breathing. I hate being alive. I'm in tremendous pain. I'm in tremendous pain. Help me. Help me. Help me. I'm in so much pain. I'm in so much pain. I'm in so much pain. Financial pain? Uh, the pain of ego death? What kind of pain are we talking about here? Because <laughs> you seem to be pretty active. You seem to be moving around. I couldn't do that. My ribs are fucked. They're fucked five ways from Sunday. What uh, what what sort of pain are you in? If I flailed around like that, there'd be fucking bone dust shooting out of my ears. <laughs> but he's like, I am in so much pain. Let me do calisthenics. Guess it's his tribute to Richard Simmons. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on. But of course, conversation continues. Boogie Spurgs out, and Muda comes on and tries to discuss this with him, but doesn't really kind of get anywhere. Everybody's a little, you know, worried about kind of touching on the subject. So, of course, you need to, you need to bring in somebody. <laughs> you need to bring in somebody who's willing to, you know, be an asshole. Oh, I wonder who that person might be. Who's the asshole we could bring in? You, you don't you want to talk to... about it, and I don't want to talk about it, but somehow you still want to talk Muda about it. Does. I'm so Muda confused. Hard does. I look honestly. Muda Har brought is, it back. Up, this so is such talk. a dark subject. I don't care. You're like saying stuff like that's like people are gonna pick on you about. I literally laughed like your mom spanking your boner, saying bad boy and shit. Like I'm sorry, but I just. Which <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's hear that one more time. That's a great sound clip for game. <laughs> your mom spanking your boner and saying bad boy. I literally laughed like your mom spanking your boner saying bad boy and shit. Like, I'm sorry, but I just, which is not funny, right? But it's just, this is not the place for this stuff. This stuff is too serious and too dark. Like, it, it's not the place for that. Yeah, we're here to make jokes and, and do this drama is not, shit. This is not Dr. Phil, you know? It was like, like a fucking Mr. Uh, Medicare segment. He's the guy that can fucking cross, cross examine. Well, bring him on. He can do it. I don't care. I don't care. We'll get it done. Uh, let me hit up Mr. Medicare. Say his name and like, while, while he does that, there's no, you're not thinking Mr. Medicare's in chat says he'll talk about it right now. Yeah. God. Wait, really? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. <laughs> no, we can't. We just, we're doing so well. We're getting views and money. Don't, don't let him on. Oh, no. If you're getting, if getting his boner spank was uncomfortable. Oh, what's going to happen when Jim joins? Oh, no. Oh, no. We can't let Jim join. <laughs> oh, God. Please let this clip play properly. Oh, yeah. I wonder how it goes. I wonder how things go once Jim jumps in. <laughs> my mother kiss twitted my fucking tampons. <laughs> my money. My mother tweeted my tipples. My mother kiss tweeted my fucking tipples. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, what the fuck, man? <laughs> this is a dark, serious conversation. He's grabbing his tits, calling them tipples. Oh, my mother's. Oh, God, mommy grabbed my tipples. She would grab my little tipples.
this is something Keem brought up earlier too. You know, but he's like, oh, hey, this is dark. I was fucking horribly abused. <laughs> Keem looks at him. He's like, oh, your mom gave you a titty twister. No, she she grabbed, she twisted my tipples, my sensitive little tipples. I don't want you guys to think that uh, I don't take this seriously. I do. Uh, I take this very seriously. <laughs> I even, you know, because we're making lots of jokes over here. That's that's highly inappropriate with such a dark subject matter. So I wanted to play a PSA, really, you know, let you know the severity of this subject matter because it is it's important that you understand uh, what we're we're discussing and that it's a grown up subject and it should be discussed in a, a very adult way. So I pulled up a PSA that really lays that out for you. And remember, being abused by a male does make you gay. So if something like this happens to you. Know that it is your fault. You did wrong. And telling someone about it does make you less of a man. The bottom line, if you are molested, you wanted it, you did something to deserve it. That make you weak. No offense. Being molested means you're gay. I think that's, uh, I think that's a message we can all really get behind, Chad. <laughs> I think, I think when somebody, when somebody twists your tipples, when they're going for those tipples, it's, 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 uh, that's the point, really where you realize that you are, in fact, a gay man. They've touched your tipples, and now you're gay. <laughs> there's, there's no taking that back. I'm sorry. So what was this conversation like? And this is going to get to the crux of the matter. Uh, I know I'm making a lot of jokes, because really, you can't even really have this conversation with Boogie, and we'll talk about why in a second. But like, I want to give you like a taste of it, because I was in this fucking thing for like an hour. So let's 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 go over some of it. You know, I wanted to get essentially like a baseline. This is essentially how this was set up was like this. Um, they had infographics and access to a Kiwi Farms thread with a post that outlined all the statements Boogie had ever made. And I got brought in to basically ask him about it. Not super familiar with it, but I, I was like, I'll read it. Fuck it. And so when I come in, I want to get a baseline. I want him to lay out everything. So I can compare it to all the other statements he's made previously, because otherwise there's no way to, like, square it up. So let's just, I'm going to play just a sample of how ridiculous this shit is and why it, like, dead end <laughs> on itself. So uh, you, I think you'll enjoy this. Why don't you tell me just the basics? And you can leave out the people you don't want to talk about. I'm fine with that. But just the basics of what your actual claims are. Because I'm going to read through this, okay. and they're going to have screen caps of stuff you've said. So you tell me right now what the real story is when it okay. comes to the abuse you suffered. So through talking to my family and having a better understanding of what happened, um, when it comes to my mom, right, she guys. wanted to make sure that I never left her. She wanted to make sure that I never was sexually attracted to other people. And that's one of the reasons she fed me wrong on purpose. We've talked about that before. Um, part of that was to... Can you expand well, on, on that? When, when you say fed you wrong, what do you mean? Uh, she put the wrong foods into me and then forced me to eat them. You know, oh, she would, No, what I'm, what I'm saying is like actually physically sat you down and force fed you. She just made you fatty foods. What do you mean? No, by no, she, she gaslighted me. She's like, everybody eats this way, Steve. This is how everybody eats, right? Everybody eats pizza. Everybody eats all this. You want to... And I'm like, why don't we eat the way they do on television, Mom? And they're like, well, nobody actually eats like that. Was oh, your okay. brother? But, uh, but no, even from start. So you're yeah. trying to say that one of the aspects of the abuse you suffered as a child was your mother gave you pizza? No, she <laughs> would give me no healthy alternatives and encourage me to overeat on purpose. Now. Yeah, but your brother's not overweight. So tragically, our bookster, as he's being just horrifically abused at this house, having his tipples twisted, was fucking fed Domino's. They played a terrible game of Avoid the Noid. It was uh, for keeps. It's a high stakes version of Avoid the Noid. Yeah. Tipple twisting and pizza. It's a little it's a little bit much. <laughs> it's a little bit much. So what was the issue we ran into? And this is why this is such a pain in the ass to get into. Um Boogie had for the past, I'd say decade based on the screen caps I saw and what he admitted on stream, talked about this. Talked about all aspects of the alleged abuse that he had gone through. Um, with, with all sorts of different people uh, related to him, strangers, all, all this stuff. And he talked about it openly. He talked about it even on, like, uh, Ethan Ralph's Kill Street. 
He was on there a couple of times, talked about it. Talked about it in his blog post. Talked about it on Twitter. Talked about it in his YouTube videos. Talked about it with Wings um, on, I think, the Low Call pod- or podcast like four or five episodes back to some degree from what Wings was saying. Or something of that nature, right? Um, so he talked about it quite a bit. But when this conversation went down, he started laying out all these ground rules. Because now we have these infographics, we have these long-form posts talking about all the statements he's ever made. And a lot of them have to do with people he refuses to talk about. And the people he would talk about were either deceased or not around. But anybody that was alive or could react, he wouldn't bring that up. Now, he did call some uh, people on the phone to try to ask some questions, but the way he worded it made it a little confusing. So how do you talk about something like this? Right? If the if the allegation against Boogie is he made all this up, right? That he's, he's sympathy farming or he's exaggerating. You know, maybe part of the abuse was real, but not all of it. Or maybe it's all fictitious and completely made up, like the cancer shit. Um, or it's some kind of a weird grifting scam, like the cryptocurrency thing. But he's got all these ground rules because he doesn't want to bring in uh, these third parties, even though he's talked about these third parties extensively for years for years and years, how do you talk about it? Well, you don't. You can't. It, it, you end up talking about eating too much pizza and getting your uh, tipples twisted. That's what you end up with. It's a dead conversation. There's no way to proceed with it unless it's just all out there, unless you, unless you can just read the statements that he's publicly made, publicly made. Where do you go with it? You know, it even got to a point because uh, Keem had kept talking about, oh, I want to do this punishment with you to get you back on the show, to make you have amends. Um, and he had, like, suggestions for it. And my suggestion at the very end of this was you should bring on the A-Logs. Because who's going to be more informed than the people that throw the shit out of them? Or make a YouTube content on them that, that have a, a better knowledge of this than I would or Mudo or Keem would or Wings would. They would know all the details of these stories to be able to ask the questions that are going to actually hit. That would be uncomfortable. That would be a punishment because he wouldn't be able to run away from that. But sadly, I don't think that's going to happen. It would have been entertaining as fuck if it did. But uh, apparently that's not going to happen. So this conversation, it just kind of sort of peters out and dies there. What are, what are we left with? We're left with him arguing and lying for 20 or 30 minutes about a phone conversation he says didn't take place, but it looks like it took place with a person he said he never talked to. He instantly got a a hold of on the phone within two seconds, and then they admit they talked repeatedly with him throughout the year. You've got him, uh, you know, talking about just silly, goofy shit, throwing fits left and right, just, just doing all this shit. And it culminates at the very end of this stream because there's no ground being made on these fucking allegations with Muda saying, Hey, well, you know, maybe if you want to do something, you should match me. Let's uh, donate money to uh, fucking St. Jude's or a cancer charity. And of course, Boogie's like, I can't do that. All I've got left is, uh, I think he's at $3,000 and I can't afford it. I need to pay for my medical insurance for what your fake cancer. No, I need to pay for my fucking medical insurance. He's just going on and on and on about this. So finally, they convince him to do it. They convince him to pay uh, three thousand, and he overpaid by twenty-five. So three thousand twenty-five dollars, and then uh, Mudahar matched him. So St. Jude's got a random payment for like seven grand from two two people <laughs> slap fighting on a, a live stream. Uh, but what was Boogie's? This is probably the, my favorite bit out of all the entire goddamn. It's like honesty shown through at the very end. It's like a, <laughs> like the facade dropped for a minute. And he actually says this. Hold on, let me get this. Uh, let me get this fucking clip lined up because it's it's great. Donate some money to dying children, children dying of cancer. And what is it's just? I I don't even want to like ruin it. I just want to let it play. Oh, is it not set up properly? It might not be set up properly. Let me get this full, full screen here. There. Hopefully that's hopefully that's right. The good, <laughs> the good news is I'm I'm getting my play button back and charity got help, so that's all that matters. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna leave it at that. All right, buddy. Wait, if I donate a little bit more, do I get the play button? We matched. If I get my three thousand back, sure. You take money back from dying kids? <laughs> no, no, I mean no, Mo- 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 Holy Mo- shit. Mudahar Mo- 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 would also have that. to give me my three thousand oh. back. Somebody clip that. What a guy.
This <laughs> guy threatens to charge back the money. If I don't get my play button, no, fuck them kids. Fuck them kids. They can die. I don't give a shit. Fuck those kids. Unbelievable. <laughs> Brilliant. Way to go, Boogie. Way to, way to leave them on a high note, right? Way to really end that stream, that uncomfortable fucking stream, on a high note. Now, I can't say for certain. Uh, again, because I'm not super familiar with it, whether the abuse stuff is real or not. Um, any, anything's possible. It, it is the boy that cried wolf. And I know, it sounds awful. Who would ever doubt somebody coming forward with abuse, physical or sexual or whatever abuse uh, they suffered as a child? Oh my God, how terrible. How could you ever doubt them? But this is a guy that has just lied about everything constantly. Constantly. From big things to small things. So it doesn't surprise me that there are people making infographics about this. There are threads that have detailed posts that are fucking 20 pages long going into details about statements previously made where they contradict themselves or other people that are familiar with it actually make statements on it. And again, I'm trying to be vague. I'm trying to actually respect his wishes by not like putting a name out or, or saying how they're related to him, you know? Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that um that he's being doubted on it I, I again i know it's a heavy fucking subject but this is a guy that crypto scammed everybody said it was a joke and this is a guy that said he had cancer when he didn't uh, it's a sympathy farm and got called out on it and i you know I, i'd almost want to see somebody make like a collection of boogie lies like put together a, a definitive edition of things like that. But you'd have to sit through so many videos and so many live streams of him making contradicting comments. Even just on that one that I did, there were even more buried in it. But the one with Wings in particular was just so egregious and out in your face uh, that it made it easy to kind of like stitch it together so you could kind of see how it fluctuated throughout the entirety of the, the live stream. So, I mean, where does that leave Low Kyle Live? Hey, Keem still wants to redeem this man. So, you know, he won't bring the A-logs on. So he convinces him well, hey, oh, I shouldn't say convinces him. He threw out this suggestion and said, hey, if you go get a tattoo on your face that says liar because you lied about cancer, um, we'll let you back on the show. We'll do a poll with the audience to let you back on the show. So, uh, you know, apparently that's what happened today. <laughs> uh, uh, wrong, wrong thing. There we go. Boogie went to a tattoo parlor and live streamed himself on Locale Live. Getting liar tattooed in Comic Sans on his face. I'm not sure the size of the script. Now, I watched this take place live. Um, I don't know shit about tattoos. A lot of people said, is this real? Is this fake? Because that tattoo gun made no noise. Could this be more boogie bullshit? It's possible. It's possible he's trying to pull a fast one and this is some some bullshit scam. Uh, but he's going to have to put this stupid thing on his face every day for the next two years. Because apparently that's the duration they came to. So it's either a real tattoo he's got to get laser removed in two years, or it's a fake one he's going to have to redraw in the exact precise same location <laughs> every fucking day for the next 700 plus days. In fact, that would almost be the more entertaining option, because I look forward to A-Logs doing video like analysis, like CS, uh, CSI level shit on this. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> whatever the fucking show with a guy with the sunglasses. I can't remember what that was. Uh, but like, you know, uh, tech analysis, did the L move, did the I move, did the A move, did the R move? They're going to be watching that shit like a hawk for two years. So he gets this allegedly, allegedly tattooed onto his face. Uh, you can watch it. it, it there is is up on, uh, live stream. So you can watch and... You know, come to the conclusion for yourself. Again, I'm not a tattoo. I don't have tattoos. So I don't know. Maybe maybe they have silent tattoo guns now. But, oh, could you imagine? Could you imagine if he faked that? After all the shit that's gone on, could you imagine if he faked the punishment? I don't... Uh, then, then uh, how would you ever bring him back on? I mean, it's not my fucking, you know, live stream show. This is Keem's wheelhouse. So I guess he's going to do whatever he's going to do. <laughs> but if Boogie faked that, oh, that's going to be disastrous. And if it's real, it's, it's, yeah. So to me, I guess it is funny either way. Cause now he's like obligated to keep this up for two years. So if it's lie, he's got to live that lie and he can't ever fuck up or it's going to be catastrophic. And if it's real, he got this shit tattooed on his face. And it's going to be there for a while. But the thing that really interested me 
is Keem kept saying on his stream, I'll only bring Boogie back if 70% of the audience agrees to it. If 70% of the people watching, and they had like 23, 24,000, they got about 20,000 votes. And the first poll didn't hit 70%. So, <laughs> so they redid the poll. They're like, okay, you know, hey, Boogie got this tattoo on his face. He's really apologetic. Uh, you know, I think we should we should really, you know, have some mercy on him, have some pity on him. What do you think that second poll result was? What do you do you think the people were were merciful to the old bookster? Not at all. No. Sixty one percent. Not at the seventy percent threshold. Now, Kiva said, Oh, well, I'll bring you back on. I'll let you back on. But I don't think so. I think you need to be a man of your word, Keem Star. We can't dono scam the audience. <laughs> there, there will be done. 61%. That's not that 70. Boogie's got to find another 9%. He's got to increase that. Now, he's got liar tattooed on his face. That got him 61%. Here's what I think. How do we get that other 9% going, right? Because I want to be helpful. I want to be solution-oriented. A little helper be over here. That's what I like to do. So how do we get him that other 9%? Well, we could do the A-log stream. Well, Keem could. Uh, but that's probably that's probably going to be very arduous. I doubt that's ever going to happen because they're going to they're just going to fucking destroy him if they did that. I think to really make this count, he's got to go to a tattoo artist, one that the audience picks, so we know they're a real tattoo artist with a real tattoo gun. There's no shenanigans. There's no doubt, and get the word "tipples" tattooed on his fucking forehead in size forty-eight font, and I think that would earn him the other nine percent. What do you think? Audience, do you think that that, should I do a poll? Should we get, should should his solution for that other 9%, uh, Tipple's forehead tattoo? Yes, no. <laughs> you know, to really, to really get him that 9%. Let's see if that works. Now, I know, you're thinking, what does Tipple's mean? I don't fucking know. <laughs> That's the that boogie phrase. But, I think it's good enough. I, I, you know, I think it's one of those things where somebody that's unfamiliar with it would never know what it is, but everybody that knows knows. The second you see this obese man with the word "tipples" on his forehead in thirty-six font, you'd be like, "Oh, it's Boogie." I mean, he wants that nine percent, right? The the will of the audience is very important here. I'll, I'll give you all a second to vote. Now, I don't have the same viewership going on right now. It's a it's a Wednesday night. I got nothing exciting going on. We only got fourteen thousand over here. So I'll wait for, let's, let's let the poll go for a while, get some votes calculated and see if the, that 9%, if that's, if that's doable for Mr. Tipples, <laughs> avoid the noise. Oh my God. Maybe, maybe make him get a Tipples tattoo on his forehead and deliver dominoes for like a week dressed as the Noid. You guys ever see the Noid? That's an old like mascot of the company. <laughs> so Jim, you're such a fucking asshole. Why are you such an asshole, Jim? Why'd you do this to this poor man? Oh, such a dick. Such a jackass. All right, we got 4,000 votes coming in. Give it another minute or so. But right now, it's looking like people really do like the Tipple's forehead tattoo idea. Sitting right now at a 92% yes. 92% of the audience thinks that well, if he wants that extra, extra 9% to really get back on that show, he needs to get Tipple's put on his fucking skull. Just giving it a second here, chat. Giving it a minute. Let me put some background music on while we're doing this. There we go. It's nice. That's soothing, isn't it? Oh, it's so soothing. Take a moment and vote in the poll. Should he get a Tipples tattoo? Are we Are we getting... Is he going to do a Tipples tattoo? Is that what we should do? I think so. Vote in the poll for the Tipples tattoo. <laughs> I'll give it one more minute. Oh, that's right, Chad. The Noid is coming back. Everybody loves the Noid. Oh, I'm telling you, I mean, look at that. It's pretty definitive. Nine, about a third of you voted. Yeah, you know, five and a half thousand votes on its way to six thousand. Ninety-one percent. 91% of you are all agreeing 
Tipple's tattoo on his fucking forehead. It's in that bowl. Now, this is important. Because I have, I have no direct sway. <laughs> <clears throat> But I think, uh, I think by the rules of the internet, right, Keem's obligated. He said 70% threshold. We need another 9% here to really let him back on that show. I think the Tipple's tattoo is the winner. <laughs> if you get a chance, demand it. In fact, if you, if you get a chance later on today, make sure on Twitter to tweet at Keemstar and say, we demand a Tipple's tattoo. We demand you brand your loco with a Tipple's tattoo on his forehead like he's a fucking, like he's, like he's a, a heifer. He's a heifer at the farm. We demand it. Where is my Tipple's clip? God, I love this clip. It's so fucking ridiculous. My mother kiss twitted my fucking Tipple's. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to fit the whole thing on there, but I don't think we could. I don't think you would actually get the whole fucking thing on there. My mother twitted my tipples. My mother kiss twitted my fucking tipples. Oh. His tipples. His sore little tipples. Well, that's my experience with Boogie. It's been a wild, a week and a half to two weeks of watching this as it imploded. As lie after lie and scam after scam blew up in his face. The reputational damage he's taken. Um, I, I don't know how he's going to undo it. I don't know what arguments he's ever going to win. I don't know how he's ever going to walk back from it. God help him if he ever has something tragic actually happen. Nobody's going to believe him. Even when it comes to this abuse stuff, people are going to doubt because of what they've witnessed happen over the last week and a half. That's that's rough, but that's the situation he put himself in. I don't know if it's like a like a compulsive lying thing. I know they keep throwing out like the term was well, covert narcissist. <laughs> it's all these fancy psych terms and shit. The dude likes to lie. Apparently, just likes to lie about just fucking everything. Big things, small things, in between things. Doesn't really matter, does it? So, how you walk it back from that, I, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. But I don't think, uh, I don't think there's anything more to cover about him. I mean, that's pretty much all the big ones, isn't it? I mean, what, what else? Like, unless he throws himself off the overpass or goes through with his plan to fight the cops, there's pretty much nothing to talk about. Like, he's, he is, he's shot himself in the foot. So many times, I don't know where he goes from here. Uh, but it has been uh, one hell of an implosion. Uh, and I've been enjoying, I've been watching all the a videos as they recount it. Because <laughs> again, they have more teeth. That's what I think would have been the best solution. Really have them on and do like a confrontational thing where they can bring up all the shit and he can defend himself and say whatever his counter is to it. That would have been highly entertaining. Uh, but it had been wild. It had been wild. And I don't know. I don't know if a channel's monetization could handle it. Remember, all the naughty words. Well, they'd be dropping some bigger ones. There'd be some N-bombs going off in there. A couple of N-bombs. Oh, boy. I know there's uh, other news. Other things have happened this week with Mr. Beast and uh, his transgender sidekick. I'm sure that's going to unfold into an even crazier story. I mean, I watched that happen, too. And over, yeah, that was about the course of a week, two week and a half as well, with videos coming out hitting like a hundred thousand to a million views. All these DM and private chats are leaking. You've got ex employees. I think we're up to four now. Previously, it'd been like three people. Now it's like four ex employees all coming out and saying, "Oh, there's there's way more going on," and everybody knew, and uh, all this terrible shit's going on behind the scenes. And boy, it's gonna be mad when it comes out. And then we get uh, this PR statement where they're they're walking away. You know, for the, for the, it's just best that I walk away. And then right on the tail end of that, we've got all these clips now of Mr. Beast starting to pop up. So I don't know where the fuck that's going to go. <laughs> it's a hell of a thing, though. It's the biggest channel on YouTube. What, 300 million subscribers or some crazy shit like that? You know, I was reading articles, kind of looking into it, because I don't know shit about these people. Looking into it, and uh, what has he got, like an Amazon TV deal, like the biggest one that's ever been done, and a lot of money on the line. So I don't know how this problem's going to... Are there going to be more leaks? Is more shit going to come out? I mean, it's just fucking crazy. Yeah, I mean, you had... Uh, you've, you've had... <laughs> it's just been a hell of a week. It's been a hell of a week. I want, I, I, take this, for example. Today. Today. I look on the computer. What do I see? Fucking uh, Sean Combs. P. Diddy is apparently alleged to have murdered Tupac. Paid a million dollars to have him assassinated based on a prosecutor's filings. 
mentioned 70 times by a police informant that uh, P. Diddy was out there looking to whack uh, Tupac. Now, that sort of pisses me off because I remember music from the early 2000s. And I'm thinking I had to put up with P. Diddy and his little make-a-wish friend. Who the fu- I can't even remember the guy's name. The guy in like the fucking uh, uh, tinfoil outfits and shit. Mace or whatever it was that used to dance with him. That's the shit I got? Because he killed Tupac? I thought Suge Knight was supposed to be like the fucking terror of the rap world. Turns out it's the gay dude. Turns out it's Shot Combs. Running the sex parties at his mansion. That's the guy. That's the the head honcho. Who fucking knew? Who fucking knew? Killed Tupac. Probably killed Biggie, too. Let's be honest. Motherfucker's out there killing anybody with talent. That way he looks good by comparison. That's my theory. Get rid of all the people that I can actually rap. And then you're the last one left and you look good. Did he did it. <laughs> Yes, and we're all from, I see people in chat bringing it up, the Eminem diss track against, uh, oh, what the fuck was his name? I can't even remember his name. But he mentions it as a joke line about uh, P. Diddy killing Tupac. And then this news comes out. Fucking unbelievable. <laughs> when, it's, been, it's been a hell of a month. Hell of a month for just about everything. Oh. Well, what are you going to do? I was mostly focused on Boogie. I liked watching the implosion. Yeah, I saw all the stuff in the periphery. I, I see the Mr. Beast stuff coming and going, and we'll see how that plays out in a week. You got the P. Diddy stuff, I guess. I talked about that. You got Cheadle, head of Secret Service, of course, stepping down after the disastrous job they had done. You got Kamala running against uh, Trump there. That'll that'll be, I'm sure, all the political people will be talking about that for the next fucking 16 weeks. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Politics. I don't think she's yeah, she's not very likable. I don't think she's gonna do well. That's there there you go. That's my political take. I think Trump's gonna win. There you go. Yay. <laughs> How informative was that, Chad? And our dark stream about sexual abuse of a fat man. Well, a little bit of politics. Talk a little bit about YouTube and a bit about the rap game. See, I hit all of the subject matter. And I, I know how to you gotta diversify if you wanna sell those hats. You gotta really touch on multiple things. People aren't just going to buy a beautiful, well-priced hat at medicare.myshopify.com unless I really appeal to their interests and what they want to talk about. (laughs) Shameful. Terrible. Okay. Let's see here. Now this is going to be weird. Because of the remonetization on YouTube, let me put that little picture up again. Remonetized. Look at that. Remonetized. For a day and a half. Because of that, I have actual super chats, super berries, at YouTube. So I'll read those. Then I've got Ko-Fi uh, Super Chats as well as Cash App Super Chats. So we've got three variety of fucking Super Chats to go through. I'll read them all. I'll read them all. Your humble hat salesman will, of course, read them all. Let me just start getting some stuff pulled up here. I don't even remember. It's been like a year and a half, two years. I don't even remember where the shit's actually put. Let me go find it here. It should be... Where's the section that says, please, please, God, Susan, give me my money? <laughs> Where's that section? Where is that section, Susan? But yeah, it's not even her anymore, is it? It's that, um, it's like an Indian dude. I I, can't, I don't actually know the name of the guy that took over. It's a new dude, though. Susan's gone. She's off drinking Franzia in the wilderness. I don't think she's around anymore. She's disappeared completely on us. Get rid of that. <laughs> Oh, actually, let me put it. So it says, so it says what it is, and then people won't get mad at me and be like, "Why did I walk in at the point that I don't want to? I don't want to actually listen." Here, let me just change that. There we go. I forgot to put this up. I had this up uh, all fancy and stuff. Put that right there. Nope, that doesn't work. Does that work? No. Uh, there we go. Nope. And well, how about that? How about right there? Fuck it. There we go. That'll work. So uh, let's do one more small break. I'll come back. I'll read Super Chats and throw them all. Um, as far as my boogie coverage, I'm I'm spent. You know, it was the, it's just too many interesting things to me. The crypto scam shit, which was uh, like just <sighs> stupid. It's just very fucking stupid on his part. The cancer thing, which actually did personally bother me to some degree. And then, of course, the, the abuse stuff, which 
fucking couldn't really go anywhere because you can't you can't talk again it's weird if you're going to talk about it everywhere for 10 years incessantly and then put up all these arbitrary rules about not talking about it what you know like what what is accomplished nothing right nothing's accomplished and then people are just going to continue to doubt <laughs>